So let's talk camera bag. Let's talk macro photography camera bag. In this video, I'm gonna list my most essential items for macro photography that I plan on bringing along on my photo walks in 2024. And uh, I typically make this video once a year around the New Year's and every year it changes a little bit. Every year I discover some new tools and maybe I replace some old tools. So this is the 2024 update. First of all, the bag. Actually, I try not to bring a bag whenever I can. I am of the philosophy that uh, you should bring as little gear and as little stuff as you possibly can because it's always constraining to some extent to have lots of stuff on you when you're photographing. So most times when I do macro photography, I actually just walk around in the vicinity of my house. Usually I just walk one or two kilometers away from my house and then I don't even bring a bag. Then I just put the camera around my neck and go out. And I prefer to do it that way. But sometimes I go on a bit of a longer photo walk or excursion, maybe two or three hours. And then it can be nice to have a bag because you want to bring a little bit more stuff maybe. And then I usually use this bag. Uh, this is a, like a no name. A no-name shoulder bag, it's not even a camera bag, it's just a shoulder bag, it cost me like $20. I'm not sure of the brand, it says Simon here. <laughs> I don't think you will find much if you search for it, uh, but yeah, it's, it's nothing fancy, nothing special. I just love it because it's small, lightweight, uh, sturdy, it has a zipper on the top. A lot of camera bags, for whatever reason, have these like flaps that go over it, so you first have to undo the flap and then you can open the bag and that is just so inconvenient it's so much work and it's so frustrating i just want to be able to access my stuff quickly and i can do that with this bag and it's actually great because even though it is small uh, you can fit a camera and a really big lens on that camera in here and i can also fit some batteries and some other small things that i might want to bring but if I go on a slightly longer excursion, maybe I spend the whole day somewhere, maybe five, six, seven or more hours, then I want to be able to bring some coffee, some water, some food, and then I want a slightly bigger bag. This bag is by Peak Design. It's 15 liters, so it's pretty small. I really love this bag because it's high quality. It looks good. It's very, very easy to access your stuff. You can do it in several different ways. For example, if I have it on my back and I want to access a camera or something quickly, I can just swing it like this and open the side like this and I can do that on both sides. You also have this um, flexible compartment in here. So for example, when I'm using a long lens, I can put it this way, but I can also use it as a shelf within the bag. And yeah, this bag is just perfect for a day trip. You can bring a camera, a big lens, maybe an extra lens, a little bit of food. And then in the side pockets here, I usually have coffee uh, and water. And by the way, the bottles I use for uh, liquids are these. Uh, these are by Clean Canteen, the brand is called. And I really love their stuff because it's high quality. It feels like they will probably last a lifetime and they look beautiful and they work. <laughs> they do the job really well. And uh, this water bottle, I drink from it every day. Uh, really love it. Uh, we have these bottles for the kids and yeah, I have so many of these because they are so good. Uh, so that's a great idea if you want a high quality water bottle. I also like the idea of not drinking from a plastic water bottle. Uh, this is stainless steel, I think. Anyway, this bag by Peak Design, I really love it. It's so comfortable and uh, yeah, I'm super happy that I purchased this. And please note that none of the items in this video are sponsored in any way. I did not get paid to use any of these items and I would never 
accept payment for that because I want to be able to pick my own stuff. It's not worth it to get bought by someone. I, for example, I would never be a camera ambassador for, for some brand because then I wouldn't be able to switch camera brands and that would kind of suck, I think. So these bottles from Clean Canteen, I can warmly recommend them. Uh, I always bring one with coffee and one with water when I go out on a longer walk. And then for food, what I typically do these days is uh, I bring these. This is a Swedish brand of uh, crisp bread with some stuff on it, like some uh, cream cheese of some sort. Uh, what I love about these is that they are small and compact, around 200 calories each. So if I eat like four of them, I have a really good lunch that will keep me full for a long time. And they take almost no space. They don't require refrigeration, so I can keep them on a shelf for as long as I need to. And that is of course very uh, useful if you're traveling and you don't maybe have uh, access to keeping them cold. Uh, so I always keep a bunch of these and just grab some off the shelf whenever I go on a longer photo walk. Uh, such a good way to have lunch. I'm not sure if these are available in your country, but you can probably find some similar ones. We'll get to the cameras in just a moment, but first I want to talk about something else that is also very important, and that is camera straps. And for that I use this one. This is the Peak Design Leash. And uh, it's the same brand as my backpack. Uh, and uh, I actually think the whole company got started as a Kickstarter for this kind of camera strap. And I honestly think that this is probably the best camera strap that you can get. They have a wider one as well that I used a couple of years, but I actually prefer this one because it doesn't get in the way as much and it uh, packs smaller in a bag. And uh, it's actually, I think, very convenient, even with a big camera and a big lens. I even use this one when I'm using the 200 to 600 lens. And I, I don't think it's uncomfortable. This is just the right uh, width, I think. It has, of course, these anchors uh, that uh, you can buy as many as you want of and put on all your cameras. So it's super simple to attach and detach the strap on the camera. Just like so, and now it's on around my neck and then if I want to make it shorter I just do like this and if I want to make it shorter here I do like this and yeah it, I just love this strap. Uh, Peak Designs products are really well crafted, they are not the cheapest but I definitely think that they are worth every penny. So let's talk cameras. This is uh, the Olympus OM-1 and the OM 90mm macro lens. I haven't used this lens a lot yet, but I plan on using it a lot in 2024. So the reason I purchased the OM-1 was that during 2023 I made a review of this lens and then I got to borrow this camera and I was so blown away by the automatic focus bracketing for macro photography in the OM system cameras. So I immediately realized I have to buy an Olympus camera. So I got this one. This is kind of the top of the line camera. I think it's around 2000 US dollars. You can buy older models and still have the automated bracketing. So um, yeah, look into that if you think that $2,000 is too much for a camera. I could totally understand that. There are older models that you can get used that are almost as good and that can do automated bracketing. Uh, please don't ask me exactly what models can do that though, because I don't know that in my head. You have to do your own research there. As you know, this is uh, maybe the most revolutionary macro lens that was released during 2023. Uh, it's a 90mm 2x magnification macro lens, but since it's on the Micro Four Thirds system, that means that it's equivalent of 180mm a uh, four times magnification on full frame. So it's really an amazing lens. And uh, you have this clutch here so you can do uh, manual focusing um, in a really manual way or automatic mode like this. Uh, I really love this combination, even though this lens is pretty big and long. 
Uh, what I've been using mostly during uh, 2023 is actually a much smaller lens. And that is this one. This is the Olympus 60mm, widely regarded as one of the best macro lenses you can get, especially for the Micro Four Thirds system. And if you're looking to get into the Olympus system, I would suggest to do what I did. I began with purchasing this lens because it's very good value for money. It's like $400 and uh, it's extremely good. Uh, the only shortcoming of this lens, I feel, is that sometimes you want a little bit more magnification. This lens is uh, only one-time magnification, which is in most situations is good enough, but for the kind of very small insects we have here in Sweden, where I live, I usually want a bit more. I want one and a half or two times magnification. But what I did during the year that worked great was that I uh, just attached this, which is... Uh, the Raynox DCR 250 magnification filter. Just attach it like this. You need a step down ring in between. And then you get to 1.65 times magnification with this lens. And I would actually argue that in most cases it could actually be better to use this pretty cheap solution. This is like $480 in total. Uh, I would actually say that I prefer using that solution in many cases uh, over this one. This one is like three times the price uh, and also it's a lot bigger and heavier. So uh, uh, in many situations I actually think it's better to use the 60mm. The reason I bought the 90mm was that I wanted to play around with it some more and also because it's very convenient to be able to go anywhere from infinity focus to two times magnification by just turning the focusing ring. With the 60mm and Raynox solution I have to detach the Raynox filter if I want to do lower magnifications and that can be a little bit uh, awkward in some situations. And the best flash that I've come across on the Olympus system is the Godox V350. Really, really good, especially if you're doing a lot of fast focus stacking in macro photography. This flash is just really, really good and the best one I have ever tried for macro photography. And uh, together with that flash, I use this diffuser, the Cygnus Tech. Uh, I really love the Cygnus Tech Diffuser, uh, it's so simple to assemble and it is so small, compact and flat uh, when you have it in your bag and it creates beautiful photos. So this is a really really good diffuser, especially if you're using an Olympus camera with the Olympus 60mm lens. But I'm pretty sure that Brandon who makes these diffusers can custom make them for pretty much any camera and lens combination. When I'm using the Olympus 90mm lens, I'm gonna actually be using this diffuser. This is the latest AK diffuser. Really love AK diffuser. Uh, they are very similar to Cygnus Tech. Uh, what I love about them is that they uh, hold together like this even when you don't have them on the camera. So you can use them with an external flash if you want to. And also the latest version, this one, actually folds 100% flat. So when you want to take it apart and have it in your bag, it can be completely flat, which is new and which is great. Really love AK diffusers. Uh, diffusers. <laughs> uh, they render very beautiful uh, images and uh, they are just great. And this one is made especially for the Olympus 90mm lens, so this is what I'm gonna be using with my Olympus 90mm during 2024. Sometimes though, it's fun to uh, do some variations to make photography more interesting, at least if you're doing it as much as I do. And what I love to do sometimes is to use an external flash, a wireless one, and then I use the Godox TT685, a bit of a bigger, more powerful flash. Uh, what I do is I put this plastic dome on the flash, like this. And this is actually not like um, a proper diffuser, this is just a lamp dome made out of plastic that I found in a hardware store. Uh, but it makes for a good diffuser and then I can be a lot more flexible when I'm doing photography. I can hold it like this, or like this, or like this. Uh, when I'm out photographing insects, so it's a lot of fun to have this kind of solution. Of course you need a trigger for that. I have uh, this trigger. 
the Godox X... What's it called? X2T. <laughs> this is the one I use for uh, Olympus. And then uh, on my Sony camera that I'm gonna talk about in a moment, uh, I use this one, it's a slightly older one. Uh, I have to have a special one for each system. Uh, they will trigger the flash uh, wirelessly. Good to know if you're doing macro photography with this is that you need to hold the test button when you turn it on. Uh, because then you go into close proximity mode and you will have a lot fewer errors and problems when you have the camera close to the flash as you have in macro photography. A lot of people ask me about sensor dust. I usually have most of these problems on my Sony camera that I'm going to talk about in a moment. Uh, but what I do to remove sensor dust, I do it a couple of times per year uh, when it's needed. I use these. This is um, visible dust swabs and they work well I would say. I've always used this and I've cleaned the sensor with this a lot of times, never had any issues. What I have had some issues with though is uh, the cleaning liquid. You want some kind of liquid uh, to, to use for the cleaning that you can drop on the swabs. Um, right now I have this one, it's called Smear Away. What I don't like about this one is that it is alcohol free, but it's very, very smeary. It's actually kind of funny that they call it smear away, because what this does many times is it in introduces a lot of smear on the sensor. Earlier I used some other liquid that was with alcohol, and that one was a lot better, but I think actually they discontinued it because they were afraid that it could possibly hurt the sensor. It never hurt my sensor as far as I could tell, but yeah. Anyway, I mean, this one isn't great, but it works. What I usually do is I take no more than like two drops of this on the swab, then I clean, and then if there is any smear, then I take another swab which is dry and I kind of uh, use it as a broom and try to, to uh, take away all the smear. And that works pretty okay uh, for me. So let's talk a little bit about my Sony camera and my Sony system as well, because I'm still using that quite a lot for macro photography. And I want to tell you when I use the Sony system and when I use the Olympus system. The OM-1 and that whole system I think is unbeatable when it comes to fast focus stacking of small insects. And whenever I want to do focus stacking, I definitely bring the OM-1 camera. However, when I want to take single shots and I'm not going to do stacking, I actually still prefer to use my Sony camera with a Lawa lens, a fully manual Lawa lens. And I think the reason for that is probably that I just used Sony cameras and Lawa lenses for such a long time for macro photography, so it kind of feels more like home to me. And also it has superior dynamic range, more megapixels, and uh, yeah, I don't know, I, I just love the feeling of using a completely manual lens. And my go-to setup in the Sony camera world right now is my Sony A7 IV, a really brilliant camera. And uh, I use this not only for macro photography, but for all kinds of photography. Whenever I want to do portraits or landscapes or anything besides insects, I always use this camera. I really love this camera. Unbeatable autofocus, really good ergonomics and the lens selection is incredible. Uh, if you're gonna get into general photography and want a really good camera for under $3,000, I think this is the one to get. And I use this lens as my preferred macro lens on Sony. This is the Laowa 85mm f5.6. Many people prefer the Laowa 90mm because it goes all the way to f2.8. But I have found when I'm doing macro photography, I think that for me f5.6 is definitely enough in pretty much every situation. And I love the incredibly tiny form factor. This is a full frame lens. Still, it is so tiny and uh, it just makes shooting more fun when I have a very small and lightweight setup, I think. Another lens that I really love that I've been using for a long time is this one. This is the uh, Laowa 25mm. 
that goes from two and a half times to five times magnification. Really, really good lens, uh, really, really fun to use. And this is what I bring when I'm doing full frame macro photography and I want a little bit extra magnification. Then this one is great. And uh, for diffuser and flash on my Sony camera, I still use most of the time this Mike MK320 as a flash. This flash is great. Uh, it's only like $60 and it does a really good job. Especially if you're not stacking, if you're just taking single frames in macro photography, this flash for me is more than enough. And then this very simple diffuser that I've been using for so many years. Uh, my particular one is of the brand Dörr. I'm Unfortunately, I think this one is discontinued, uh, but you can probably find similar ones if you search for on lens diffuser or on camera diffuser on sites like eBay or Amazon. Uh, it does the job and it folds flat like this and it's such an easy to use, good diffuser and also very cheap. And that's it folks. That is all my favorite macro photography gear that I'm gonna be using in 2024. And as last year, I'm sure I will discover new things along the way. Uh, but this is my baseline equipment that I bring with me into the new year. Thank you for watching and please subscribe if you like macro photography because that is what my YouTube channel is all about.